Hey everyone. Just waiting for Sarah to join us. Perfect. Okay. Sarah, do you want to request to join the call? I think. And then I can add you. Oh, perfect. Invite. Okay. Hey. Hi, how are you? How, I'm doing great. How are you? Good to see you. Okay, How's everything? Well. And then I'm, Can you hear me fine? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me fine? Like, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think it was in the beginning it was a bit um, um choppy, but it's good now. Should I get my headphones? Sure. Okay. Yeah, everybody. I, I know. That. Hey, everyone. People can jump in while we're getting ready. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Are you in Addis? Yes, I am. I'm in Addis. It's so hot today. I don't know what's going on. It's, um, yeah, I'm just here. How about you? Are you back or are you still up? Hey, Caleb, how are you? Hey. Your connection. Oh, there we go. You're back now. Yeah. Sorry, are you back in sure. Addis or are you still? No, in I'm in Abidjan. I'm in Abidjan. I'm, uh, yeah. In Abidjan. Yeah. Scaling the biz. So awesome. Well, I think, I know, I know. That's awesome. I, I'm, I love seeing all the stuff you guys are doing out there as well. Um, so we can jump right into it. Thank you, Sarah, for joining us for this month's Spotlight. And also thanks for everyone for tuning in. Um, I know we had to push it um, a week in advance, uh, a week forward. Um, so thank you all for rejoining us. But this is our second um, Spotlight of the month, as you know. It's a platform that we use to kind of give a shout out and spotlight to other organizations that work in the sexual and reproductive health space um, and just kind of learn from each other and share experiences. Um, so we're lucky to have Noble Cup uh, founder with us today, um, Sarah. Um, she'll also be giving us a little um, introduction about herself. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm just um, the CEO of Yemi Health based here in Ethiopia. We're an early stage femtech company that focuses on women's reproductive health, um, more so on the learning and product side. So delivering information and access to products uh, for women here in Ethiopia. Um, so yeah, so with that kind of overview, why don't we jump right into it? Um, before we jump right, I guess, into the, the fun discussion, Sarah, can you give us a big, a quick intro about yourself, your background, where you're based now and kind of um, the quick overview about um, Noble Cup. Yeah, um, thank you so much, first of all, for organizing such a function. It's really important and it's, thank you for taking like the, the lead on connecting all the kind of people that are working in this space of sexual reproductive health and women's health. Um, my name is Sarah Eklund, I'm the founder, CEO, of Noble Cup. It's an African uh, menstrual cup company. So we work uh, to bring um, menstrual cups to awareness and accessibility to women in Africa. We launched initially in 2018 in Ethiopia. And now I'm in I'm currently in Abidjan in West Africa. And I am scaling the business here. Um, and yeah, a menstrual cup is just, uh, uh, here, I'll get one for those of you that don't know. Sorry, I should have been more prepared, but maybe this is nice. Uh, this is a noble cup. So this is a menstrual cup. It's made from medical grade silicone. Um, it is super squishy and soft and it is a reusable method of menstrual management. The way it's used is you can fold it 
and then you insert it into the vagina and it um, seals to the, like within the canal. Uh, so period fluid can uh, co be collected rather than absorbed compared to tampons and pads, which are more popular methods of management. Uh, dumped, rinsed, and reinserted. Um, it is for me, like I, I, it's a, it's a great way of having like a zero waste, comfortable, hygienic menstrual site management um, practice, and something that I think, since as women we're going to be menstruating for forty years every month, it's worth giving it a shout, giving it a try. Um, I don't know. Should we get into? Yeah. No, that's, that's my great. intro. Yeah, my mom is Ethiopian. No, I love it. <laughs> oh, <And> yeah. <laughs> my Amharic is bad. <laughs> but that's No, that's awesome. No, thanks for that for that overview. I think I love how you just kind of showed us what a menstrual cup is, but also um explained the use. But I think a lot of people still don't really know what it is, especially in this market. Um it's still quite new and there's just so much benefits that um, that period cups come with. So thanks for giving us that overview and also showing it. Um, yeah, so you said 2018. I mean, it's, what a journey it's been. I know you guys have like really pioneered the way for even that product being available in Ethiopia. So I think um, that has been amazing on its own, as you, as you definitely know firsthand how it is like to um, be in the business space as a specific niche um, you know, woman product um, company. Um, what made you, I mean, why Noble Cup? Why Menstrual Cups? Why SRH? What drew you to focusing in this area in the, in the, in the first place? Um, so I tried a Menstrual Cup when I was 25 because I like had heard about it. It was getting traction. And honestly, it was like this BuzzFeed article that like really kind of just, I bought it online and um I was living in New York at the time and I realized that uh it wasn't that hard to use like I thought it was going to be like really not interesting but I really just tried I bought it late at night because I was bored um and and then after I used it I was like wow this is such a like I was there was no leaks like it was quite once I figured it out like I was like okay cool and then it was the first time in my life I sort of thought about uh, people's menstrual experience outside of myself. Um, so I, I uh, started doing some research. I was like, what's it like to menstruate in Ethiopia? And I, you know, I went to high school in Ethiopia. I grew up in East Africa, like until I turned 18 and went to university. Um, I we used to travel to America and get pads and tampons because American products were better for my like body, which I'm, is a ridiculous kind of concept to think about in retrospect. Um, but yeah, and it's a ridiculous concept to think about because whatever, always Tampax, they're filled with like chemicals, bleaches, dyes, formaldehyde, like there, there's literally, it's pads and tampons are the only product. Like when you start to learn more about it, it's just like the only product that doesn't have to put the ingredients into it, even though it gets like in, into the body. Um, there's really no like sort of control on that. And it's a big scam, uh, yeah. especially like the pads and tampons of like if you have options of getting organic, get organic. Cause it's really like the vagina is the most absorbent part of your body. Um, and it's, it's really important to, to um, do that. Um, anyway, so I looked up this yeah. stats and it's horrific, right? It's like um, understanding that 67% of Ethiopian girls don't get menstrual education in school that um, an obscene amount of women, of young girls, don't even know about what periods are until they've reached Menarche, which is your first period. Um, 
and this lack of discourse and education just leads to like it perpetuating this pe- taboo culture and a shame and so I yeah. just really wanted to share this like really convenient what I thought was convenient I really just started the company because I thought it was a great product and I wanted to share it with more people. Now in the States, in Europe, the price point for a commercial menstrual cup is around like 20 to $30 or euros, which is in, in line with, if you're buying a pack of pads for $60, you know, like the amount. So I just wanted, I was really interested in bringing down the price point and trying to create an affordable cup for the market that I'm interested in. Yeah getting to yeah. which are African menstruators. No, definitely. You know, that brings me to a like, segue to my next question is, you know, even as you said to yourself, you know, you learned about it and you're curious. And then also talking about how much of, you know, there's lack of information and awareness around these types of products. How was it, you know, I mean, I guess coming from the Western society, all these things are kind of available or you kind of see it in one way or another, whether it's in school or in commercials. But I think, you know, when you come into the Ethiopian context, like you said, it's really not part of um, primary education. Um, reproductive health isn't really embedded in that just principal um, time of learning for young girls. So how was that, you know, how was that experience kind of coming in with, an, with, with a product so new with its, you know, with all of the stigma and just lack of awareness um, and integrating your product into the community here and like, How's, how has that journey been and where is it now compared to where it was like? In yeah, you know, I started in Ethiopia because like, you know, um, it's the homeland. It was difficult, you know, it took, I had to, Noble Cup is the first company to uh, was to bring menstrual cups into Ethiopia. Uh, prior, there have been some like NGOs that have bring menstrual cups, but they don't have to, they can bypass uh, Erka. So... Mm. Um, it was the first we made the laws and regulations for how menstrual cups are imported into the country Um, we did a lot of education in government just just even to get the product into the country because initially people like like you know we'd be like oh this and they'd be like oh it's for like a car I guess there's like a Mm -hmm. car part that's like a similar look Mm, and it's okay. like no it's for the body and then they put us on the same tax code uh, or like hs code as pads and tampons despite the product being significantly different in the sense that it's reusable and um it's not made from like a cotton based uh cloth like you know like fabric based structure um yeah and so it was it was tough it was tough, but, but I think you can also attest it's just life, work is tough. It's not, we yeah. don't need to complain about it. Um, again, with the culture, once we got the products in and had them, it was, there's still, I think, across Africa as well, um, a huge stigma on insertable products, whether that be tampons or cups or sponge or a finger like anything that gets inserted is is taboo um so that's still like our greatest sort of feat is 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 that pushback which is also understandable as well you know um it's really hard yeah. to change a behavioral practice when it comes to menstrual uh hygiene and and that is also in line across the world right like menstrual cups are a really niche thing that said like i think it's and it's a it's growing in popularity like even in i remember the first time i heard of someone saying that they used a menstrual cup it was um i was like 18 and i was working i was interning for this organization in new york and brooklyn that does like it's called docs to docs and we took like medical supplies that weren't used in the U S and then we sent them to different places in Africa. And so I was just working in this warehouse and then this woman was like, Oh, I use menstrual cups. And she explained it to me. And I was like appalled. I was like, you're a gross woman, hippie. You know, like I was like, I couldn't even, I was like, what do you mean? You just, it just stays inside you. This like plastic, but even though, you know, and I never really thought of it. It's like, you know, it takes a lot 
of entry points for for people to sort of even consider buying and using such a product um, yeah no definitely I can definitely see that I think you know as you said there's so many challenges both on the legal kind of landscape as well as the cultural um, space especially with all the stigma that already exists in that space but at the same time I mean you guys have been around for four years now um, still active still see your products in a lot of pharmacies here and at decent I, I think there's even more buzz um, that's going around with your social media campaigns and, and so on, especially with, you know, Ministry of Health endorsing a lot of um, these these things now eventually in, in, some, in some capacity. Inshallah. You know, there must have been <laughs> there must have been some things that have, you know, that were kind of high points that you've experienced to really you guys um, to keep things going. And, um, and continue this work. And what were those high points? Um, just uh, amongst those experiences, the high that you points had. in what? Sorry, in 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 yeah, like so. Some of the positive things, you know, you, you spoke about the challenges that you've had and just the struggle, but at the same time, yeah. for you guys to still remain in Ethiopia, but as well, you know, expand your services and your products in also other countries. Um, what were the positive things that you experienced in this journey that made you and encouraged you to really push push this agenda and keep going? Um, you know, like the feedback, you know, it's so like when you do get a user, whether they like it or not, when you do talk to women and, and sort of share Noble Cup and sort of, cause I think also like the company, as I'm sure you know, as well, could this, it's like, you have to do so much education where before you can even show your product, you know, like you have to and it's it's not just education it's like you have to like sort of bring forth like another way of thinking about menstruation and like considering like what if we looked at it differently from a different lens from a different perspective from a different angle um you know we some of my most memorable moments were really um we do these eqb workshops like every queen bleed workshops and we like go to different schools and universities, workplaces, and we discuss um, different kinds of stuff, like about pe basically menstrual health. And people were very, um, it's just really fun hanging out with young women, being able to talk about periods and like stories and, and what happens and um i think i'm really another great success is just the team like i i think i've gotten i've met so many incredible people through this journey um from different agencies different men and women that are really passionate about uh rethinking the way we look at women's health which is really cool so it's like it was really yeah. nice to not feel like alone like even though I felt a bit crazy because like when I first started doing this like in the U.S. or in Ethiopia I'd be like I sell menstrual cups and people would be like what is that now at least in the U.S. like people like it's like oh yeah cool I've seen it at Walgreens or CVS but yeah. before it was it was really really hard um and so you ha I had to just with every person that asked me what I did and I said what I did, I had to go and explain it regardless of like if I was in the Western world or in Africa. And now the fact that that has been, that culture has been changing, like even on the continent is also really cool to witness to sort of like see also because menstrual cups have been around for like decades. Like they were invented in the 1930s. You know, this is not some like silicon valley technology this is just like some simple engineering um yeah uh, yeah no definitely yeah. i think those are definitely um things that can encourage you and keep going and i think for me what was interesting is not only where you get you know i think just in this space in general not only do you get pushback from just a lot of people that don't experience these things like men or policymakers, but also uh, from other women that just don't, mm -hmm. you know, don't think that other women should use this, especially in this context mm -hmm. where um, just regulations actually prohibit you from using just innovative products or more 
um, modern products um, in this space. So I, I can imagine um, kind of, you know, those kind of positive things be encouraging to continue. Um, you know, totally. I, think I mean, the comes... first minister, the, when I first started working, like the minister of women and children, she was doing a donation drive for pads and tampons and and fota menamen for like street kids and women in prisons and a friend of mine who's older than me like quite a bit older than me he's like in his 60s he like heard it on the radio and he's like we got to figure it out and he like went around to all these government offices with me to try to like figure out how we could donate noble cup because of course like i i would love to just like be able to drop them off Okay, sorry, my yeah, no problem. I try to save my brain by like locking myself out of Instagram, but every day I continue. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no so like yeah, I try. No, I, 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 I definitely to, understand. To, to to get to get to get uh to get this to like the right person because Noble Cup needs a bit of explanation. It can't just be donated and and it's not fota it's not a menstrual pad where there's quite an awareness and literally the head of uh the minister for women and children at the time just dead ass looked me in the eyes and she's like i see how tamu lejno bakish exigit like go buy us some other things like oh my god we don't need this product she like i put the cup on the table i was like here da, 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 and explained it after and the thing is, we went to, like, the drop-off center in the Gion to, like, be, like, talking. And all, it was a bunch of guys that were, like, setting up the tent and stuff. We went. We showed them our YouTube videos. We showed them the product. They started calling their girlfriends. And, like, like this is so cool. They, like, were the ones that, like, helped us. And it's, like, some ignorant woman on a power trip just took away the opportunity for more people to to have it because she was like yene no like yene setoch like they're not going to do this like you know and mm. sorry my amharic and french is like now in the same side of my brain so it gets messed up but <laughs> you know okay. she was just like she's like yeah we're not going to like no ethiopian no respectable ethiopian girl would put that in them and it's just like fuck you like who are you to decide what women want to do with their bodies like really like who are you to be that guardian of virtue you know and mm. it was insane and it was really sad because yeah there was all kinds of within the journey to talk to her to try and we were so happy to get the meeting with her and everything and I talked to her assistants. Yeah. I talked from everybody below her and they were all like yeah 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 this is fantastic like you guys have to do something. You have to yeah. work with 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 us. And yeah. um, it was it it's it's incredible. I I I, I don't know at yeah. Yeah, I mean I think ignorance that's ignorance is is very much alive in in institutions and navigating that and and when you're working within the menstrual space and people think that they that's the problem with the vagina is just people don't want to admit that the vagina is owned by the human that the vagina is on you know like these mm. rules and regulations to like like this woman saying she doesn't want yeah. to take noble cups because they're impure for ethiopian women <laughs> was, was really unfortunate um yeah you know i can definitely yeah i can definitely attest to that too it's quite there's a quite a lot of um awareness that needs to be done not only amongst the users and uh women um you know at the lower level of um you know the end of policymakers and decision makers but also up top where you know those are the people that are making decisions for the country top. Yeah, so we definitely, I think... It's also, they don't like want yours. to look at facts sometimes, you know? Like, yeah. for instance, like, I'm constantly being faced with this concept of, like, is it hygienic? 
like are you sure like oh my god yeah, a and woman that around that. would not wash her hands and touch her vagina and it's like yeah like it's fine the vagina is self-cleaning yeah. like you guys like what do you think like you think women have like the purest underwear every fucking day to like you know, it's really frustrating yeah. that, like, you can show them Lancet reports, you can show them all sorts of data, and at the end of the day, like, still, like, you know, I still get people in the EU, like, you know, I'm trying to talk with people in the EU, like, yeah. the other day I was talking to some, like, diplomats to try to get some funding, and they're just like, mm, you know, you're really passionate, but, like, what about the water? The water's not clean, and it's like, yeah. I'm washing my it's, badge with that water. So relax. Like, you know, like, it's really like, just let women have choices. Like, let them definitely. have the option. And if anything, when you integrate and understand menstrual cups into your livelihood or into like a concept of something, it gives more awareness to be like, to, to more care to be like, oh, I am going to wash my hands. Oh, I yeah, am going to like, you know, because it's, a product that can really benefit a life. It's not like, I don't know. I, the amount of times I've slapped on a pad between my underwear and just hated my life because I'm yeah. like, like, you know, and, and I think, yeah, I'm sorry. And I think that's no, definitely. I think that's why we need organizations like Noble Cup and um, organizations like Getting yeah, Health to really yeah. work together and advocate um, for these things that I think passion, you definitely need to um, hold on to that passion to really move the needle forward. I know we, we're kind of cut on time here, but kind of a last um, question that I want to raise and comment from your end, you know, even with just Noble Cup itself, I know a lot of women are also um, scared to try it or um, don't know about it. So there's a lot of resistance um, from, you know, even women from the US that come here and so on. So what are, uh, what, what's your advice or suggestions to just help them kind of just, you know, um, try this, uh, especially, the product that you guys have here in Ethiopia. And lastly, what's your um, a message that you want to leave us off with as Noble Cup um, in terms of just anything, in terms of anything? Um, how can people support Noble Cup? Where can people find Noble Cup? Um, how would you like to work with DNA Health? What are areas that you need support in right now? Um, and again, a few minutes for that. And um, So the first half of your so question was, was, was surrounding like Ad the, advice for women to advice them to oh. use yeah to just like try I mean, noble cup i think i like and i i, I really I, I think there's just like a lot that as a culture women and men also and women we we can like sort of discuss how we're marketed for like you know whether it's a lipstick or a tampon or a cup or like a birth control or something like the way we become uh, just vehicles to give people money, to give companies money is like something we need to be more critical of. And as a menstruator, we can have a mixed use approach to menstruation, you know, like there's no uh, better method of menstruation practices other than the fact that I would hope that women are empowered enough to have hygienic menstrual practices. You know, if you're using cloth, jerk, you know, it doesn't matter, like use your dick, but make sure that like, it's like bone dry after you wash your rag and you, 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 you put it in because otherwise you're going to get a yeast infection or like, you know, consider like all your options when it comes to menstrual hygiene, whether they're panties or a cup or something, because we just menstruate forever. So it's just, we've got the time to, to to try to try a new to try a new new method um, and where can people find noble cup here in ethiopia or abroad and yeah uh, so in a message least, from you guys yeah um you can go to noblecup.com if you're in america and you want to buy a noble cup we do a price fix where we sell it for 30 dollars there because um we make it it's just price fix that way um, and Addis, they sell for like two thirty to two hundred to two thirty, um, and it's in South Pharmacy um, at uh, 
There's a list. Sorry, I haven't been in Addison forever. This is so bad that I don't know all the, the locations. But Ruth Pharmacy, um, uh, I think I'll check out our Instagram. Pharmacy. There's a list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Life Pharmacy, awesome. Atlas Pharmacy, or or Life Pharmacy, which is an Atlas. Uh, yeah. And if you're in the Ivory Coast, you can get it at the Carrefour or some Prosima locations, Historic Dozo. Um, and my one thing I think that I think is important to take away with, you know, and I think DNA Health, I think we kind of align on a lot of things, but also I just encourage everybody to talk about menstruation more to sort of like break down their own personal boundaries when it comes to what is menstruation and then also to consider how to talk about it with uh, younger people. Um, so we can get young girls to be less, young girls and young boys to be uh, understanding more about puberty. So it's it's more um, simple when changes happen. Changes are always difficult and changes are constant, yeah. you know? And I think it's important for, I always just tell people to just like think about like how menstruation is represented in their media uh, are they allowed to talk about it with their father? If you're a father, if your daughter has um, menstruation, are you willing to go buy her pads or do you create a boundary where certain topics are not for her, for you? And, and then you really have to dissect that because a loving father should be able to, to help uh, her daughter out whether she has cramps and she needs a hot water bottle or she needs him to run to the shop to buy him pa to buy her pads. Um, Definitely. And I think it's, it's just like, it's the oldest menstruation is the oldest taboo across all culture. Um, and we have, we have a tremendous way to go and, 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 and I don't even know what the future or what the end goal would be, but, for us to continue to discuss something that is happening to half of the world for 40 years every month and to sort of destigmatize that and to normalize that is something that just doesn't even benefit the woman herself. It benefits a whole community and it benefits yeah. a, a whole economy. It creates a more productive society. It creates a more healthy society. So if these are things we're interested in, we need to, um, not shy Talk away about from the actual biology yeah. of a woman and and you know i yeah. always wonder i'm like is it because menstruation is so sacred is that why it's so tabooed you know because it's so like you know god it's god no like you know like it's making new life it's making new future like the idea yeah. that you know we can procreate I mean, it's just incredible. And so the idea that it's so um, frowned upon or, or people get insulted or, or uh, discriminated against for such, for having such a normal functioning healthy body is something that I, I just, I just hope my company at the end of the day can sit on shelves and at least allow people to question their own um, boundaries for where they, they allow menstruation in their life. Yeah, that's that's something really great to, to leave off with. I think there's definitely a lot that Yeni Health wants to do with Mobile Cup, and definitely uh, we will, and we're working on it. So we're super um, inspired by your work and your team, um, know, and man. we need you guys love you here, all. and we need more. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time, just sharing your thank you so much for organizing um, thoughts and insights with us. Yeah, and thank you everyone for joining. Um, make sure you follow Noble Cups Instagram. Um, I think you guys are also on, are you on Twitter? Um, so we have, now we have a Noble Cup ET, which is Bamaina. Okay. So we're trying to like create that universe. We have a Noble Perfect. Cup, which is what we're, I'm talking to you on, which is more English based. And okay. we also have a Noble Cup underscore FR, which is like a more French universe as, you know, um, communication is key. We're trying to, to, just, to make it yeah. easy. So. Whatever suits you guys, if you can follow us there. Thank you so much yeah. for organizing it. Can yeah, I do we'll a little test? Tags, you guys. Sure. 
Well, because I have these puppies, this. and I'm just curious if if the algorithm will know that we have puppies. Oh, okay. this is kind of weird. I just want to yeah, check the technology. Puppies. Um, will the algorithm know that my puppy is there, and then we get more follows? Maybe I'm not. not. Maybe sure I should have done this at the beginning. No, I think I'm losing followers. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank no, you so thank much you for... for your time again. And again, we will host these every month, um, the last Friday, and have different people and organizations. So if you guys have anyone you want to hear from and is related to our work that we do, we're happy to um, bring them on. So always DM us with that. And yeah, thanks, Sarah, again. And we'll thank you so you much. Soon. I appreciate have it. Have a great rest thanks. of your day. I'm like in the Ciao. dark. Um, the power went out. So sorry if you can't see me. Um, oh, wow. you're good. You're good. <laughs> struggle. Nice, nice screen glow. Bye. <laughs> She have a good day. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.